some more on that debt agreement and whether or not uh, Congress will be will back it. We are joined from the White House uh, by the National Economic Council Director Gene Sperling. Uh, Gene, uh, great to have you back with us. Uh, you know, we're just talking to Mike about how economists are reacting to this. Uh, how does the White House make sure that foreign investors from this deal, because there's a lot of questions about whether or not this is really going to address a long-term debt situation here. How does the White House reassure foreign investors that they should still continue putting their money here? Well, let me just uh, speak to everyone, not to any particular investor. I think what people should feel good about is that you've got a significant down payment on deficit reduction that includes uh, cuts on the defense and security side, uh, as well as protections for college students. You secondly have a bipartisan commission, which will hopefully, we believe, try to do what you've seen in the Senate, Gang of Six, where it's a balanced approach of tax reform and entitlement reform. People should feel comforted that the debt limit will now clearly be extended uh, into 2013 or uh, late into, very, very late into 2012, and that the threat of default is now for certain off the specter of this economy, no longer a headwind or a cloud on this economy. And then finally, uh, it, it related to something Mike said, they should know this president is going to fight to extend the payroll tax cut into 2012. We mm -hmm. are going to fight to get unemployment insurance benefits for 5 million workers who are still struggling hard to find work in this economy. So okay. we understand that you need to do things in the short term to give to help this recovery take hold, but we also need need to take away the headwinds, the uncertainty that have been fed over the last couple of months by people well, wondering, both investors and average Americans, whether America might actually go through its first default in its history. Well, but Gene, it doesn't address one uncertainty, which is whether or not the U.S. can avoid a credit downgrade. Is this going to do it? Well, I think that one of the things Standard & Poor's and others had said was that a real negative in that decision would be whether we'd be doing multiple votes on the debt limit. In other words, would uh, uh, investors, average Americans, be looking at the specter of default every few months? That was one of the things that the Republicans were pushing, just having a short-term debt extension. Uh, the president drew a very firm line in the sand there. He did not blink, and he's made sure that we have taken that cloud of uncertainty from default off our economy, not only for the rest of this year, but for the rest of next year as well. I do right. think that provides a degree of certainty that will be important to many people. But some, including Mohammed El Arian, have pointed out, though, that in S&P's uh, you know, press release about this threat uh, you know, in mid-July, they said that there would have to be $4 trillion in cuts in order to avoid a downgrade. We don't have that $4 trillion, so that is why that threat is still looming. Well, you're going to have to speak to them. That's not my understanding of their view, but that's their decision. What we have to do here in Washington is show that divided government doesn't mean dysfunctional government. The fact that we were able to reach a bipartisan compromise, that we were able to get a down payment, that we were able to set up a bipartisan process to do more significant uh, entitlement and tax reform to reduce the deficit further, the fact that we've taken the specter of default off our economy for the next uh, year and a half. I think all of those will be, for most investors, for most job creators, for most ordinary Americans, uh, important developments. And, uh, and then also knowing that this president is going to fight to extend the payroll tax cut and do other things to help this economy and this recovery take hold right now. Gene, I'm just curious, what's this last 48 hours been like for you? Well, it's been uh, uh, kind of almost like a constant uh, meeting with the president. Uh, he has been, uh, uh, we've been meeting with him and the vice president almost nonstop as calls have gone to Speaker Boehner, Leader McConnell, uh, uh, Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi, back and forth. And the president himself had to get very, very involved in some of the rather minute minutia details at the end, uh, but that's what we needed to do to get this deal closed and not have the specter of uh, a Monday morning a potential Treasury auction where there was uncertainty about whether or not uh, uh, America was going to be on the cusp of default. So it was, uh, it was an interesting time. Uh, it's interesting work, but we have uh, a president who is willing to get very, very engaged at a detailed level to help resolve this. Okay. I'm sure uh, not a lot of sleep going on over the last 40 hours, Gene. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.